All right, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna be walking you through how to create beautiful Pinterest photos using Canva. So I just started my Pinterest account a few weeks ago for the asknickfoy.com brand. Uh, I've been currently just using Instagram and building up Instagram accounts, but I've been seeing all kinds of vloggers and friends of mine talk about how much traffic they're getting to their websites and their social media and online business using Pinterest. So I decided to start using Pinterest as well for the Ask Nick Foy brand. Uh, so I've been creating you know, these different Pinterest images on Canva that I insert into my blog posts and then they get pinned here on Pinterest so people can click on you know, any of these images and it's gonna take them to my website and they can read my blog posts. So, you know, a couple, for example, the beginner's guide to creating your first online course to sell. What's a landing page? Why do I need one? You know, the ultimate guide to starting your email list, ultimate guide to using ConvertKit for email marketing. So I've got a bunch of different helpful articles on asknickfoy.com and now I'm getting traffic from Pinterest to my website. So how do you create these vertical uh, images as well as these horizontal images. So I'm going to be showing you today about the vertical images as these are the kind that are friendly. Uh, Pinterest people love the vertical images. It seems to be the best for driving traffic back to your website or whatever URL you put in for the Pinterest image. So I use Canva, which you're going to need to create a free Canva account. Just go to canva.com sign up with your Facebook profile, your Google Plus account, or create an email, uh, use an email to create a free account. And then it's gonna log you in here, and they're gonna have a bunch of different templates. So click the More button, and it's gonna open up all the different template options they have. So right here under Social Media, you're gonna see they've got you know Twitter, they've got a general social media one, and then you're going to want to notice the pixels that are changing because the pixels are very important for image quality. You want a high resolution, sharp photo. So you're going to want to pick something, you know, that's got a lot of pixels. One way to do it is just to use custom dimensions of your own. So if you know the image size that you want to make, you can type in the pixels there. Or like I said, you can pull from one of these templates. So they've actually got a Pinterest graphic template right here, which gives you that tall vertical image. So it's a 735 by 1,102 pixels, as you can see right here. And then Instagram uses 1080 by 1080. So when I make my different Instagram photos for my two Instagram accounts, you know, right now under 30 wealth, I've got these real estate images going where I'm helping, you know, teach people 100 ways to invest in real estate. So you can see I've got a themed profile here where every third picture I rotate back and forth between blue and orange. So that's, you know, I use Canva to make these. And then if you're gonna make quote photos, you can use Canva as well. So as I mentioned, you know, I've been big on Instagram the last few years before I finally made the switch over to start growing Pinterest. So you can see here, you know, I've been posting quite a bit, 9,000 followers and, building my Instagram account and then I've got a link here that takes them to an email opt-in so that once they click that link, hopefully they'll opt into my email list and then I can start sending them helpful emails on a weekly basis and build a relationship with them. And then I've got my golf brand where I've hit 28,000 followers in 2016. Uh, I started at just 2,000 and I made it all the way up to 28 before the end of the year. And now here we are, it's early 2017 at the beginning of this video so it hasn't grown a whole lot as of late but as you can see here again I do that themed photo where I give practice tips for golfers so I kind of rotate between black and green back and forth so I've been using Canva for that and then now as I mentioned I'm starting to create Pinterest images and trying to build a Pinterest following so when you get done watching this video I would highly encourage you to come check out my Pinterest page and if you're feeling generous, you know, give me a follow and I'll give you a follow back. All right, so let's get into creating a Pinterest graphic. So come here to Pinterest graphic, go ahead and click it and it's gonna open up a new page that's a blank template for you to design from scratch. When I make my Pinterest images that look like this where they've got you know a background image and then they've got the red 
overlay that goes over the background image and then I you know mess with the transparency so that you can still see the background image behind it and then I put you know a white border around it and I put some white text and then you know I've got the little solid bar across here with my website URL so to do all that you can start off by inserting a background image so if you come here to uploads you can upload your own background image so if we want to, let's say we want to do, you know, this, this living room image, it's not going to be the vertical style image like I want it to right away. So I'm going to have to drag it bigger and bigger until it fits. And then you got to watch out sometimes not dragging it too big because it'll start blurring it if you make, you know, the pixels don't match up but in this case this is a pretty high resolution photo so by increasing its size it shouldn't be blurry as you can see it still looks crispy clear so that's my background I start with and then to overlay I come in here to elements and shapes and you're gonna see the square shape here so I click that and then I just drag it out till it's outside of the image so that it covers the whole image and then I'm going to go ahead to color. So let's go with blue this time. And then to get the transparent effect, you come up here to where there's this checkered box right here. And you click transparency and it's going to let you adjust it. So I can, you know, put it at about 61. We'll leave it there. So it's now you can see the background image coming through the filter that I just made for this. So then to add some text, you can go in here to the text tab and choose from different pre-designed text templates or you can just create your own. But before we do that, uh, I want to show you how I make the white border. So coming back again under shapes, you just scroll down and there's going to be solid shapes and then eventually there's just border shapes as well. So I usually go to the square one and then it inserts it here and I can change the color and make it white. Now to change the thickness, you have to click on it so that it's selected and you're going to need to use the diagonal arrow to resize. So shrink it down, it's going to shrink its thickness. So we'll do about there and then rather than trying to use the diagonal again because that's just going to make it thicker. Once you've got the thickness you want, you have to use the side arrows and the up and down arrows. So I'll drag the side arrow over and then I'll drag the up and down arrows as well. And then once you're going to have to play around with it to try to get, you know, the right amount of margin between the edge of the photo and where you want your border to be. It's kind of touchy sometimes, like it's not letting me put it where I want it to. So it's, it's a little off crooked if you're going to be real technical about it. It takes a little adjusting back and forth until you get it, you know, looking pretty good. So from there, like I said, go back here to the text tab. And just pick one of these to pop on because we're going to end up customizing it anyways. So come under color and you can change the font color. So I'm going to go with the white color. And then I'm going to go back here and select what kind of font I want. So they've got all kinds of different fonts. And the cool thing about it is that each one shows you what it looks like. So that's kind of nice. You can see ahead of time what your font would look like. So in my case, you know, I might choose the alpha slab so that it's a thick, bold font that can I can blow up real big from my Pinterest photo and then as you'll notice typically on Pinterest usually you put one to two words per line so we're gonna need to make the font size really big to where it spaces out only one to two words per line so if I'm going to you know make a title um, how to start a website from scratch for beginners and then you're going to want to adjust, you know, the text cutoff so I can stretch this in, drag it in, and it's going to shrink, you know, how many words it allows per line. And then I can position it where I want up top. And then now I can go in here to the font and make it bigger. So I can go to 64, and obviously that doesn't quite fit, so I'll need to shrink it down to 56. Drag this out a little bit. So there we go. How to start a website from scratch for beginners. It's got the one to two words per line. We've got the white border around the picture. We did the overlay in blue, adjusted the transparency, and then we put our own background image to start.
if I need to get to different things, uh, to, like if I wanted a different background image, if this was my template and I just wanted to make a bunch of these with different background images, then you could, you know, select, you could try to click out here so that it'll, it selects the uh, overlay for you. Uh, and then you're going to, you know, have to drag this up a little bit to where it's going to allow you to grab the image next. So now that I've got the image, I can do what I want with the image and I can reposition it. Or I could delete it, I could put in a new image, and then when I'm done, you can come back here and try to grab the blue the blue overlay. But sometimes when you have borders, you know, these things are all layered, so you're going to have to maybe maybe arrange the the forward and back. So come to arrange here and you can forward and back the different items so that they're layered differently. So right now I'm going to need to make the white border go behind the blue layer. That way it's going to let me select the blue layer. So there, it just went behind it. You can see it got all kind of like a darker shadowy color because now it's the blue layer is on top of every, on the image and the white border. So now it's going to let me select the blue so that I can redrag it back out. And then I'm going to need to click on the blue and I'm going to have to go back here to arrange and hit back so that it takes it back one layer and allows the white border to pop back up. So here's what it'll look like. There we go. So you're going to have to play around with that, you know, adjust the layers and then, you know, click the forward and back to, to be able to select and deselect the different things that you want to adjust in your photo. If you want to, you know, add that border at the bottom, like we saw with this image here, how I kind of had the, the solid color with my URL, then we're just going to go back to shapes and we're going to pick that solid square shape again and just adjust the size to make it like a rectangle and make sure it's big enough that it covers the whole page and then, you know, just position it where you want it and then give it a color. So this time I might, you know, give it like a funky red color and then go back to text and, you know, insert some white text. So we'll blow that up. We'll make it white again and then drag it down here to the position that you want it. And then you can, you know, type in whatever you want to type in. So in my case, I would type in asknickfoy.com and then I can bold it and I can, you know, adjust the different features along here, text spacing, italicize, uh, positioning. So you've got different options here. And then if you ever want to copy, you know, any text and the, then make minor adjustments, you can just click copy and it'll, you know, spit out a whole new asknickfoy.com text over here to the side that's just like this one if you needed to use the copy feature. So now that you're done, make sure you go here to file, save, so that it saves your image, all changes saved, it tells you right here, and then give it a title, it pre-fills in whatever the text is initially, so how to start a website from scratch is my title of my image, and that's going to be the file name for the image. So if you're using the image on a website, you know, that's going to be the file name when you upload it to your website. So make sure you actually title your image what you want it to be for SEO purposes to help your website rank in Google. And then also, you know, give it a title that you're going to remember. So you're going to be able to find it easily on your computer as well. So go here to download and it's going to give you different file types either a JPEG or a PNG. So typically you just leave it on PNG, that's recommended, and then click download, and it begins downloading your image. So that's how you make a Pinterest image using Canva. You All we did was we logged into our Canva account, and we came here to the plus sign, and it opened up more image options. We scrolled down to social media, we picked the one that said Pinterest graphic, it opens up a new page for you, and allows you to start custom designing your image from scratch. Or if you want to use a template, they've got different layouts here that give you different template ideas for Pinterest images. So you could also, you know, start with a template and kind of customize it to fit your style and whatever you're making the image for. And then obviously you've got elements here where you can choose lines and shapes and icons and different cool things you want to put on your image. So that wraps up this tutorial. As I mentioned, you know, come check me out, ask Nick Foy on uh, Pinterest. Let's, you know, connect. And then if you're on any of the other social media platforms like Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, be sure to connect with me on there. I look forward to it. Thanks for watching.